Okay, so welcome to your last session. Uh, we're also going to go through 13 questions and that deals with study unit six up until study unit 11. Always remember, at least there will be two questions per study unit with the except exception of some where you might get three questions per that study unit. Because you're going to get uh, 13 questions and you are writing out of six question, uh, study unit. Or is it six or five? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, yes, six study units. <coughs> Okay, so let's yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't open the PowerPoint slide. Let me go grab the PowerPoint. I opened a PDF version. Okay. I've got it. Always remember to have your tables close by because we're going to use the tables to answer the questions. So this exam prep uh, relates to study unit six up until study unit eleven. There are only thirteen questions in here, so this will help you also um, give give you more activities to prepare you for the upcoming exam so <clears throat> you will have to go and find more questions to practice especially some people like uh, yesterday they said they are struggling with hypothesis testing um hypothesis testing is the easiest also i'm as i'm gonna assume of most of the um the study units because you just need to know the six steps of hypothesis testing. And once you master those six steps, then you can answer any question you want. But let's look at more activities relating to the study unit six up until study unit 11. So you need tables to answer this kind of a question. Which one of the following probabilities are incorrect with regard to a standard normal distribution? Sometimes you will require a table, sometimes you just require the logic. And you remember the logics that we have. The probability of Z less than a value, that is the value you find on the table. If it's the probability of Z, greater than a value and it can be less than or equal or greater than or equal that will be one minus the value you find on the table and if it's the probability that z lies between two values a and b then it will be the probability of the table value for the first, second one minus the probability of the table value of the second one if you know this logic Nothing will go wrong when you answer questions, especially on normal distribution and sampling distribution. So let's try and answer this question and find which one is incorrect. A, it says the probability of Z lying between negative 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 is equals to the probability of Z less than 0 0.4 minus the probability of Z greater than 0 0.4. Then 
B, the probability of Z is equal to 0 0.4 is 0, 0,00. C, the probability of Z less than 0, 0,4 is equal to the probability of Z uh, greater than minus 0, 0.4. The probability of z greater than 0 0.4 is equals to the probability is equals to 1 minus the probability of z less than 0 0.4. And the last one it says the probability of z greater than 0 0.4 is 0 0.04, 0 0.3446. Which one will you choose? Let's go. Let's start from the bottom. We'll start from E. Starting from E. What must we do here? What is the probability of Z greater than 0, 0,4? We go to the table. Uh, Okay, we go to the table and look for zero comma four on a positive side. On the positive on the positive side, we're going to look for zero comma four. And zero at the top. And that is the answer. So the yes. number is zero comma five five four. Zero comma six five five four. Zero comma six five five four. Is that all what we need to do? No, we have to uh, mi one minus that amount. We have to say one minus that because the sign here it says it is greater than. Remember the probability that z is greater than. You're going to say one minus the value you find on the table, and the answer will be correct because the one minus zero comma six five five four is 0, 0,3446, right? Let's go to D. We're looking for the incorrect one. D, is that statement correct? The probability that Z is greater than 0, 0,4 uh, Maybe because I'm using table value. Yeah, that's correct. That will be correct. The table That's value correct. that I'm referring to, remember that the table value is all probabilities of Z less than a value, right? Your table contains all probability of Z less than a value. So this one is correct because you can see that it looks like the same as we did with E. Number C, how do we validate that it's correct or incorrect? So we can go and check on the table to see if that is correct because number C says the probability of Z less than 0, 0,04 and that is 0, this probability on this side is 0, 0,6554. And what about this one? The probability that Z is greater than minus 0, 0,14 or 0, 0,4. We're going to say 1 minus the value we find on the table, right? On the negative side. Yeah. So let's go to the negative side. 0, 0,4, negative 0, 0,4. The value there, because at the top it's 0, so it's the first column. 0, 
zero, six, which will be equal to zero, comma, six, and five, four. So the left hand side is the same as the right hand side, which means B is correct. Oh, sorry, C is correct. B, the probability that Z is equals to 0, 0,04. Because we're dealing with normal standard, standard normal distribution, we're dealing with continuous um, variable. So if we have the probability of exact value, it will always be equals to zero. So this will be correct because it says z is equals to zero comma four zero this is only applicable only on standard normal distribution number a we'll have to check if that statement for a is correct or incorrect let's look at the rule that we know in terms of between how should we write this statement the probability that z lies between minus 0, 0,4 and 0, 0,4 it should be the probability that z is less than 0, 0,4 because we take the probability of the second one which is our B, and this is our A, we take the probability of B minus the sign must change and be greater than, less from greater than to less than, because if you look at that, it has to say, so then it means number A, is the incorrect one? Was it that was that difficult or confusing? Sorry, Lizzie, can I ask you to explain the last two again? Those two confused me, B and A. Okay. B, we're dealing with cumulative. Continuous probabilities because these are normal distribution. For equal, it will always be equals to zero. For a constant equal for exactly, it will always the probability will be equals to zero. So for standardized normal distribution, you it either has to be less than or equal or greater than or equal or greater than or great or less than because it's cumulative probabilities. And when you go to this table, this table contains all the cumulative probabilities. All this shaded area means cumulative. It's not at the point. If it was at the point, it would have been at this line, then it will just be zero. So cumulative, if it's exactly, it will be equals to zero. <laughs> As you can also see here, if you don't know uh, that, you must always remember that for cumulative standardized normal distribution, we use, uh, if it's equal or exactly, it will be equals to zero. Number A, you just go back to the rule. What does the rule? Oh, do I call it a rule or do I just say the property of a normal distribution? It says if it's between two values, A and B, you will go and find the table value for A, of oh, sorry, for B minus the table value for A. And look at the sign. The sign they for, for A, it didn't say it's greater than, right? It used a less than value. So if you look at this one, 
is just asking you to take this equation, convert it into that format and see if it looks exactly the same as this. Now, our B is 0, 0,04, so it will be the probability of Z less than 0, 0,4. Our A is minus 0, 0,4 minus the probability of z less than 0, minus 0, 0,4. So you can see that the sign is incorrect in terms of this. The sign should have been less than or equal. Thanks, Lizzie. Thank you. Moving on, unless if there is another question. Are we good? Okay, moving on to question two. A random variable x is normally distributed with the mean of 85 and the standard deviation of 20. Calculate the probability that x is at most 125. Choose the answers below. Now, what I did here on this question, I highlighted the key things, the, the facts. In the exam, you, they won't be highlighted. You need to be able to identify those facts. You need to read the question and be able to identify what are the facts given in the question. And after you have identified the facts, Ask yourself, because this is study unit six. Go to study unit six. Look at your equation or your formula. And write it down. Because we calculated the probability. So we're going to find the probability. That X is at most. What is at most? Greater than. Huh? Smaller and equal to. It's less than or equals to. 125. Therefore, it means we need to find the probability that Z. It's less than or equals to. You write the formula X minus the mean. Divide by the standard deviation. Now. If this is your X, you already defined that because we wrote it. That is your mean. That is your standard deviation. And that is your X. Substitute into the formula and calculate. One twenty five minus 85 divided by 20. What is the answer? The answer is? 2.5. Let's see if it's 2.25. Not that I don't no, trust you. No, it's 2. Not that I don't trust you. I'm going to check and use I the calculator. Two, yeah. 125 minus 85 divided by 20. 2. Is equals to 2. Yeah. The chances are you might have said 125 minus 85 divided by 20. What your equation would have done, it would have, let me show you what you would have done. 125 minus 85 divided by 20. What this equation does, it will apply both mass multiplication and division have priority over addition and subtraction. 
So it would have looked at this subtraction and look at the division and evaluated it and said, hold on, division first before multiple, before subtraction. And it wouldn't have given you 2.25. It would have given you 125 as well, 120. So be very careful when you apply or use your calculator. Use the equal sign as well. Equal sign or brackets. The top part in the bracket divided by the bottom part. So the answer here will be two, which is 2.00 because that's what I need. Go to the table. When we go to the table, we go to the positive side of the table and you're looking for 2.0 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 at the top. And the answer is 0.9772. The answer is 0, 0.9772, which is option D. Is the net? Always remember when they ask you about the probability, you need to calculate the Z value and then go to the table to go find your value. Always leave your answers to two decimal. Make sure that you know how to round off correctly as well. Question number three. An analytic company sampled 90 online meetings and found the meetings to have an average duration of 90 minutes with a standard deviation of 90 minutes. It is further known that the probability that the average meeting duration is longer than X is 0, 0,8531. That is the probability of greater than or equals to X will be 0, 0,85. 31. Calculate the value of X and choose the correct option answer from the list of options below. Now, remember two questions per study unit. How many questions we have already done? Two. We are in question number three. Already think about it. If it's two questions per study unit, and I've already answered two and I was in study unit six. What study unit am I in right now? It will be study unit seven. So it means you will go and page through to study unit seven and find the formula for study unit seven. Now, with this question, I've also highlighted the things that affect that you needed to know and highlight before you start answering your question. The other thing that will make you understand that you have moved from study unit six, you are now in study unit seven, is that thing at the beginning. In study unit six, we do not include the sample size. In study unit seven, we include and our sample size. So the minute you see somewhere where they tell you about the sample size or the sample, you must know that now you have moved from study unit six, you are in study unit seven. So they say the average, which is the mean, it's also from the sample because the question says, an analytic company sampled 90 minute online meetings and found that the average, which is the average from the sample, 
is 90 minutes and the standard deviation is 90 it is We can also not use, uh, we can also decide whether we, because this is sampling distribution. Let me, let me also go back and retract my statement about uh, uh, that is the population. So I'm going to take this as a population average, and I'm going to take this as a population sample as well. Regardless, it doesn't matter. So we can use that. Because I'm going to look at the formula for Z. For the sampling distribution, it is your sampled mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard or population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Now, the X that we are looking for is the sample mean. Um, on this question, because we're dealing with sampling distribution, they have made a mistake here. They should have said X bar sampled mean for that X because that is the average meeting, right? If you look at that, the probability that the average meeting, which is your sampled mean, um, is longer than, which will then be your probability test. But that does not stop us from solving the problem that we have now. At the moment, they have given you the probability and they tell you that that probability is 0, 8531. So what they're saying is they went onto the table or they went somewhere and they found that the probability of A, which is our X, I'm going to use X, the probability of our X is 0, 0,8531. How would they have found that probability? because the sign says greater than. How did they find that probability? How did they get to 0, 0,8531? Do a reverse engineer, because what we know that the probability of Z greater than a value is one minus the probability of Z less than a value of the thing from the table. So then it means this 0, 0,85, they have found it. We need to go and find what the Z value is, right? The only way to find the Z value is to subtract this value from one so that we can get the Z value. So we're going to say our Z is 1 minus 0, 0,8531. Because for them to get to 0, 0,8531, they would have subtracted the value they found on the table. They would have subtracted the value they find on the table from 1 to get to 0, 0,835. So we're doing a reverse engineer. We are looking for the Z, for that Z value that they use. So let's go find that Z value. So this, the Z is, what is 1 minus, sorry, 0,8531? 0.1469. 0.1469. So we're going to take 0, 0,1469 and go look for it inside the table and go out and look for those Z values. So let's go. We are looking for 0, comma, let's go back. The value is small. It's 0, 0,14. It will be on the negative side. 
because the positive side had the prob bigger probability. So we go to the negative side and we're going to look for 0, 0,1446. Ah, I wrote it wrong. 1469. 1469. So let's go inside the table and look for that number. One zero comma one four zero comma one five zero comma one four six nine. I found it. That is the probability. We need to go out. Okay, because I'm, it's gonna hide all the things. Let's take the first two digits, which is minus one comma zero, and we go up to the top to go find the last digit, which is five. So we have found our Z value is minus one comma zero five. So let's go. So our Z, we found it. This Z, we're going to replace it. I don't even have to put the sign like that. I can use the equal sign. Our Z value, we found that it was minus 1,05. The X is the mean that we are looking for. Remember I said this is a mistake. They should have had a an X bar there, which is the value that we are looking for because that's what we are looking for minus the mean is 90 divided by the standard deviation is 90 divided by the square root of 90 and we can apply maths to this so it will be minus 1,05 multiply times we take everything that is at the bottom 90 divided by the square root of 90 and we take 90 to the other side plus 90 is equals to x bar so our x bar will be equals to Is, okay, let's start first. Minus 1,05 and then open bracket fraction 90 divided by the square root of 90 and use my arrow, arrow again, close bracket plus 90. What do you get? What is your answer? What do you get? I can also move my calculator slightly. Option D. Option D. D. And when I press equal, I should get 80.0388. 80.0388, which we estimate to 80.04. Now, or forever, hold your peace. Questions? Comments? We good? 
Are we hippie? Uh-huh, hippie. Yeah, good. You must ask if you still not sure. In the absence of comment or question, then it means I'm gonna assume that you are all good. Okay, moving on. Question four. More analytics from online meetings to show that the proportion of invitees that accept a meeting, invite, and actually attend is 0.88. In a sample of 30, what is the probability that the sample proportion of invitees that attend the meeting invite and actually attend is between 0.83 and 0.93. Also, we're still in the sampling distribution, so you go and look for the formula that deals with proportions. Remember, if they didn't give you the sample proportion, you will have to calculate the sample proportion. In this instance, they did give you your sample proportion. It's between two values, 0.83 and 0, 0,9. Since it is between, so you're going to say the probability that is 0, 0,83 is less than your sample proportion 0, 0,93. So we're going to find Z between P minus the population proportion divided by the square root of your population proportion, one minus population proportion. Divide by N. P minus population proportion. Divide by the square root of. Population proportion, one minus population proportion. Divide by N. P. Our P is always in the question. The other sub proportion is your population proportion, which is the pi, it's 0, 0.88. So here we start first with the 083. 0, 0.83 minus 0, 0.88 divided by the square root of 0, 0.88 times 1 minus 0, 0.88 divided by our n is the sample, which is 30. We do the same, 0, 0.93 minus 0, 0.88 divided by the square root of 0, 0.88 times 1 minus 0, 0.88 divide by divide by that do the calculation give me the the one on the left first the 0, 0.83 minus 0, 0.88 divided by the standard error. It's negative 0, 0.8427. I want two decibel, so let's go. 0, comma. Negative 0. Uh-huh. 0, 0.8427. 
I only want two decimals, so it will be negative 0, 0,84. 8, 8, negative 0, 0,84. And 0, 0,93. Uh, the distance is almost the same, then this side will be positive, but you can just double check because this is 80, this is 9, so same distance. 0, 0,842 also. Yeah, 0, 0,84. Now yeah. we need to go to the table. Remember, we're going to say the probability of Z less than 0, 0,84 minus the probability of z less than negative 0, 0,84. So go to the table and find what is the probability of z less than 0, 0,84. So we go into the positive side and we look for 0, 0,8. The answer is zero comma seven nine nine five. Zero comma seven Then let's go to the negative side to go find 0, 0,84. The negative side. I'm going to go first at the top and just highlight this column. This 0, 0,8 is. Negative zero comma eight. Where is the column? That is the value, which is zero comma two zero zero five. Zero comma two zero zero. Right. With the magic. What is the answer? Zero comma five nine nine. Letter E will be option E. Are we good? Are we happy? I know I have no response. You are, I don't know whether are you still here? Maybe people left the session. Let's see. Oh, there are people in the session. Oh, are you tired? We are all tired. Hey, today it has been a very long day for me as well. Okay. Moving on to question five. A simple random sample of 30 items results in a sample mean of 200. The population standard deviation is known to be 100. Construct a 95% confidence interval. Oh, I forgot to ask how many questions we did on that. There were two. See? Believe me. Two questions per study unit, with exception of one that might have more, more than more than two. So it will be two, 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 two per study unit. 
Okay, construct an 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean and choose the correct answer. I don't even have to tell you which study unit you are in because clearly they have given everything to you. They told you that it's confidence interval. Now with confidence interval, remember to go to the summary uh, note. There is that table with confidence levels, right? You can use that, especially for the Z, when the population standard deviation is known. You just need to know that. Otherwise, by the time you go write the exam, do not forget this. When you construct a 95% confidence interval, or when you do a two tail, especially for Z, your critical value, because you will need the critical value, your Z alpha divided by two, when it's 95%, it's always going to be 96, 1,96. If you can learn that, you can know that, you can memorize that, nothing will go wrong, but it's only applicable for Z, when alpha is divided by two. Okay, so what is, that they have given you a random sample of 30, a sample mean of 200, the population standard deviation, which then is known, then it means we are doing the Z. Construct a 95% confidence interval, then you go immediately to the formulas, because for the formula for confidence interval for the mean, when the population standard deviation is known, it's the mean plus or minus the critical value times the standard error, which is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Your sample mean is 200 plus or minus your critical value. I already told you that it's 1,96. You can go check it times your standard deviation, which was known to be 100, divided by the square root of the sample, which is 30. Remember, you do the minus first, and then you do the plus. So it will be 200 minus 1,96 times 100 over the square root of 30 and 200 plus 1,96 times 100 over the square root of 30. For negative side, it's 164, comma 21, comma 23. And on the plus side, two three five point seven eight three three five comma seven eight, which is option. Easy, ne? This one is more easier than the others. In a sample of 150 online meeting participants that accepted the meeting invite, only 30, 135 attends. Construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for the true population proportion of participants that attend the meeting and choose the correct option. What is this one? Is proportion because it's you are told. So do the thing. If your sample proportion is not given, remember they would have given you observation satisfying your X. Identify which one is X. Calculate that. Look for the formula for the confidence interval. Sample proportion plus or minus 
Because it's proportion, also it will be Z alpha divided by two, and we're still doing a 95% confidence interval, so you, you should know what is that. P times one minus P divided by N. So have you calculated P? What is P? What is the value of X and what is the value of N? Somebody is having their TV on or some, 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 something, something. Okay, so let's go. What is our X and what is our N? They are both highlighted. So in the exam, you won't have me telling you or highlighting things for you. You need to know which one I is think, X. I think X is 135. X is 135 and N will be 150. Always remember, N is the biggest one. If you have two values, one of it is small and the other one is big, the biggest one is N. That's how you will remember. This and what is the proportion? The sample proportion will be what is 135 divided by 150? 0 0.9. 0 0.9. So we can just substitute 0 0.9 plus or minus 1,96. Times the square root of 0, 0,9 times 1 minus 0, 0,9 divided by 150. And then do the wise. Do the minus first and then the plus side first. So let's do it together. 0.9 minus 1.96 times the square root of fraction fraction 0.9 times 1 minus 0.9 close bracket down and 150 arrow Arrow, arrow again, arrow again, arrow, close bracket and equal zero comma eight five two. Zero comma eight five two. Zero comma eight five two. On the plus sign, on the plus sign will be. And and the plus and equals zero comma nine four eight. Zero comma nine four eight. So which is option D. Oh easy, ne? Even did it for you. If you don't know the critical value, which is Z alpha, please make sure that you have the summary notes next to you when you go right, so that then you can use the table that is on there to help you identify the critical values. The only time you will need or require a statistical table is if you're going to find the critical values of T, then I will say use the table because on the summary notes, the table with critical values, it's not there. It's not there for T, but it's there for Z. Okay. 
moving on to question seven. I hope we, we will make it already halfway through. Gineo Connect, a startup internet provider, would like to submit a proposal to Google to consider expansion of its next, next Wi-Fi services to remote areas in South Africa. As part of their market research, Dineo Connect needs, to, needs your assistance in testing the hypothesis that the average fiber internet cost in South Africa is less than 600. In a sample of 70 households with fiber internet, the mean fiber internet cost 550. And the standard deviation is 220. What is the value of your test statistic? Where are we at? We dealt with two questions from confidence interval. So this one will be from the next study unit, which is hypothesis testing. So if they're asking you, you go and find out what your test statistic is. Why am I writing a T instead of a Z? Why am I not saying Z stepped? Anyone? Because the sigma is unknown. Because sigma is unknown, they have given you the standard deviation from the sample. In a sample of 70, the mean is 550 and the standard deviation is 220. Both the mean and the standard deviation comes from the sample. So it means those are your sample statistics. So helps I'm using a T. Sample mean minus population mean. So you will go and look at the formula. I know the formula by heart. You don't probably but you need to know that it's the formula that you need to, to write. So you need your formulas. Okay, let's substitute the values onto the table, onto the formula. Our sample mean, sample mean is 550. Minus our population mean was less than 600. I don't care about the less than and the greater than because I'm just looking at the test statistic. If I was asked to calculate the p-values and all that, then I would have to worry about that. Divide by the sample standard deviation is 220 and the square root of sample size of 70. What is the T test statistic? What is the answer? Negative one comma nine zero. Negative one comma nine zero. Which is option A. Moving on to the next question. A quality control manager would like to test at 6% level of significance if the prototype sensor of self-driving cars have an average lifespan of 300 megameters 
Nine sensors were manufactured, tested, and found that they have a mean of 341 megameters. Assume that the lifespan of the sensors is normally distributed and that the population standard deviation is 70 megameters. What is the critical value for the test? Are we going to use a T test or a Z test? Z test. We are going to use that Z test. And the reason being is the population standard deviation is known. And are we going to divide? Is it going to be divided? The critical value that we are looking for, is it going to be Z alpha or is it going to be Z alpha divided by two? Has any way when we read the sentence, <laughs> have they have they ever mentioned greater than or less than? Or they just said they are equals to this much or they are this much. So when you read that sentence, you need to also think about what is it that they are giving you. Like, remember in this one, they said it's less than 600. On this one, it says the driving car have an average of 300. Nothing is mentioned about less than or it's exceeding or it's greater than or at least or at most. So it means we're going to be doing a two tail and therefore it means our Z we're going to divide by two. So our alpha, which is our level of significance, that is our alpha. Z of 0, 0,06 divided by 2, which is the Z of 0, 0,03. Do not get alarmed by you always using 0,95% or the level of significance of 5 and all that. The table also has the probability. Remember that your Alpha over two is a probability on the table, right? So we're going to look for this probability inside the table and go out to look for the Z value because a critical value is your Z values. So go to the Z table and inside, it will not be on the positive side because positive side has bigger values. It's going to be on the negative side. We're going to look for zero inside. A value close to 0, 0,03, it can be 0, 0,029 or something like that. So as long as it's closer to 0, 0,03. So inside, 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 inside. Zero comma. 010203 that's big 0329 is big 0314 is big that can be but there it is 0,0301 but also this can be 0,029 very tricky because we can choose between those two values. And let's go check the Z values. We can use this as a guide. Whatever the value is close, the closest one from their option, we're going to choose that one. So negative 1,8. I'm just going to go there just to see if we have more than negative 1,8. We only have one value with, 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 1,8, right? 1,8, it's only one. So we can choose that and go and choose the value there. But if you go up, 
with those two values, it's eight, eight and nine. So it will be one comma eight, eight. I would have said nine. I don't know why they have that, or maybe they took the average between the two values uh, and find eight, five. I don't know. I don't know how they derive and got to one comma eight eight five because that's the only closest value in terms of the critical value. So I would have chosen option A. That's the question is asking for a critical value. If it was Z alpha, so we would have went and looked for 0, 0,06 on here, 0, 0,06 on here. It would have been on the positive side, 0, 0,06. Also, this is 0, it would have been somewhere here yeah, around those two values which is 0, 0,2. Then 0, 0,2, you can see that. To do, do, to do, do, to do, do, to do, do, to do, do. Okay, so that's how you will find the critical value based on the, the table values. Um, Question nine, in a random sample of 200, a sample proportion of 45%, you are required to test at 5% level of significance if the true population proportion is equals to 40%. Calculate the p-value. Now, reading the question, ask yourself, are you doing a one-tail test or a two-tail test? One-tail, it means they you should hear words like greater than or less than a two tail you should have words like equal right because when you find your p value for the one for the less than the p value will be the table value for a greater than it will be one minus the table value Right. If you are doing a two tail, it will be two times the p value. Only if the answer was negative. If it was positive, it will be two times one minus the p value. Remember that we dealt with this. We did this when we were refreshing. So, but before you can get to the p-value, you need to calculate z. So let's go calculate z. You need to calculate the z step. And we will deal with the detailed one tail separate, which means sample proportion minus population proportion divide by the square root of or the standard error, which is the population proportion, one minus population proportion, divide by n. Let's substitute the values into the formula. Sample proportion is zero. N is on strike, zero point. 0.45 minus the population proportion, 0 0.4, divide by the square root of 0 
times 1 minus 0 0.4 divide by Do you have the answer? What is our Z test? What is the Z test? One, one comma four. four. One comma four four. 1 comma 4, 4. That is not the end. Now, let's go back to our question. Are we doing a one tail test or are we doing a two tail test? Are we doing a one tail test or are we doing a two tail test? Wakey, wakey. I just gave you the answer. Ah, you guys, you are exhausting me. We're doing a two-tail test. Now, the answer there, is it positive or negative? This needs to guide you. We, the Z test there is positive. So, if it's positive, we're going to go to the table even though we're going to the positive side of the table mm -hmm. we're going to look for one comma four and four mm -hmm. where they both meet that is the value we are looking for but that's not the answer it's zero comma nine two five one from here and we say two times one minus zero comma nine two five one and that will give you your p value. So what is your p value? 0, 0,1498. 0, 0,1498. I should just say two times two, two times one minus point nine. Nine two five one plus zero comma one four nine eight, and that's how you will answer the question. All this you just need to think. What does the question ask you to do? What are the things that they have given you? Uh, there are a couple of things that you need to get right. Um, am I doing a two tail test? Is my Z test value, is it negative or positive if it's two tail? All those things, if they are not in that summary table, you need to write them in your summary table with your notes. By now, you should be just adding things that you need to make yourself aware of. Be aware of this. Right. Question 10 which then it means we are left with three more questions. Now we're getting to a contingency table. Consider a four by four contingency table. You are required to test the independence of rows and columns variables with a 1% level of significance. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? We're dealing with a four by four, which means we have four rows and four columns. Let's go by one by one and eliminate. We're looking for the incorrect statement. Number A, how do we find the critical value? Remember your critical value for chi 
squared is alpha n the degrees of freedom. And your degrees of freedom is your number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. That's what A is. Is A correct or incorrect? So it means you do you need to do some calculations. Number of rows, you are told how many rows and columns you have. Number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. That is your degrees of freedom. So what is our degrees of freedom? Four minus one. Nine. Times four minus one. It will be equals to nine. And our alpha. We are told what level of significance is. That is your alpha. So is A correct or incorrect? Correct. A is correct. B. The null hypothesis is that the two variables are independent. How do we state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for contingency table? Chi square for independence. Your null hypothesis always has. You forgot about this. We did it last week, Sunday. An equal sign. Sorry. Yeah, we're dealing with contingency table. It's either independent or dependent. So null hypothesis will always state that the two categorical variables are independent. Independent. So null hypothesis independent. So therefore it means statement B is correct. The critical value is 21.66 so you said this is correct in terms of your critical value so go find out on the table if this is correct so we're going to look for 0 0.01 at the top and nine degrees of freedom on the left critical values of chi this is critical values of t Critical values of chi. We're looking for 0, 0,01 at the top and 9 where they both meet. The correct answer. So that is the same. All right. Moving on to the next one. There are 16 degrees of freedom. Is that true? False. That's not correct. So the incorrect statement is option D. E, if the observed and the expected frequencies are the same for each cell, then the test statistic will be equal to zero. We dealt with this the last time. True. I did show you the example of it. That is true. Consider the following contingency table. Of observed, calculate the chi square test statistic required to test for independence of rows and columns variables. Choose the correct answer from the list below. So we have a contingency table with rows and columns. There are two rows and three columns. This is when you can use your template. We're going to use our template. We know that we have a two by three. So I'm going to use my two by three template. 
and I'm going to take it to the side. And this is my two by three. I can change the headings at the top if I want. Change. A, B, C. It's finally P, Q, R, P, Q. And I can just change the values, only the white area that I need to remove of the observed. And this is 50. And this is 60. And this is 88. And this is 34. And this is 75. And this is 41. Okay. And we're looking for the test statistic. If I go back, I can double check that I have captured all the values correctly. And if I scroll down, 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 then I will get my test statistic here. And it is 15.51, which makes option number C correct. Easy. By now, you should know how to use the template. If you download it, if you get access to the template, make sure that you download them. Don't work on them on the Google Drive. Download them onto your, your machine and work from there. Sorry, Regardless Lizzie. of where you find the, the template. Sorry, Lizzie. Uh -huh. My sister, can I please ask you to go back to the template once again, please? And this is the template. Oh, sorry. You're taking a picture of the template. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is the template on your website, Lizzie? Yes, it's they are all there. Okay. Thank you, Lizzie. On the site, ne? if you go onto the site, you will find the template there. Uh, there are two of them. Okay, so we dealt with two questions from contingency table, so I'm not going to assume that the next one will be from there. We are left with only two questions, question 12 and question 13, so they will be from regression. Okay, so this, the following simple regression equation estimates the relationship between the number of Dineo Connects unlimited data subscriber working remotely, which is our independent variable, and the average data usage in megabytes, which is our dependent variable. And the regression line is given by y is equals to 15 times x, where 15 is your slope. And your slope in this instance is positive. Huh. I'm already giving you answers. Why am I doing that? Which one of the following statement is incorrect? A, we can do a process of elimination to get to the incorrect statement. A, there is a positive relationship between the number of unlimited data subscribers working remotely and the average number or the average data usage. Is that correct or incorrect? I already gave you the answer. It should have been a quick answer that you give me back. It's correct. That was lazy. It is correct because the slope is positive. So there is a positive relationship. That is correct. 
When 18,000 or 1,800 DNL Connect Unlimited data subscribers are working remotely, the average data usage is estimated to be 27 gigabytes. Is that correct? How do I know that? Your 1,800 is your X. You just substitute it back into that equation. So you will say 15 times 1,800. you get 27 gigabytes, which might be 27,000 on your calculator. Do you get that? Or is it another value? 27,000. Is it 27,000? Yes. Then it means this is correct. Go on and do the second, the third one. When is 22,000 22, or 2,200? 33,000. Which is 33 gigabytes, which that means this is correct. Let's check if there are 1,500. D is incorrect because the answer there is 22,500. And D is incorrect. E, it says when there is no unlimited data subscriber, when no unlimited data subscriber are working remotely, the average data usage will be zero megabytes so you just replace x with zero and that will give you zero because 15 times zero will be equals to zero and we are almost done the last question the following sum square total of squares and sum squares of squares due to error were calculated from the previous regression equation where the sum square total which is sst is 33,800 and sum square error which is sse is 6760 which one of the following statement is incorrect so this one a it says what is SSR. Now, to understand what SSR is, you can use the formula of E because that should be the correct formula that you need to, to use because your total variation is equals to your sum square measures of regression plus your sum square measures of errors which is SSR plus SSE is equals to SST. So if you have E, and I told you that E is correct because E is just the formula to calculate SST. So if you go to the regression section of the summary sheet or the summary sheet or table or document, you will find the formulas as the summation, the SSTs and the SSR. Use that. So I've, I've just told you that E is correct based on the formula. Use E to calculate A. What is your SSR? SSR will be SST minus SSE. Is A correct or incorrect? But here you just say 33,800 minus 6,760. It's correct. It's correct. 
which is 27,040, 27, that's, that's that. I'm going to skip B and C. I'll come to it later. D, the sign of the slope of regression equation determines the sign of your correlation coefficient. The sign of your slope and your coefficient of correlation should always be the same. So it means if, for example, I'm using the SSTs and the SSRs, right, to calculate the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination, the answer I will get on there will always be positive. I will never know whether the regression is negative or is positive, whether the, the slope is negative or positive, or not the slope. I will never know whether the relationship is negative or positive based on the SSR and the SST formula to calculate the relationship. But if I calculate the regression line, I will be able to know whether the relationship is negative or it's positive based on the slope. Question D is just an, a confirmation to say, do you know that the sign on your slope should be the same as the sign on your correlation of coefficient? The sign of the slope of regression of equation determines the sign of the correlation coefficient. Is it correct or incorrect? based on what I just told you. So it means if you calculated the slope and the slope is negative, therefore, when you calculate your coefficient of correlation using the SSTs and the SSRs, you can put, you can determine that the sign of the coefficient of correlation on your formula will be positive or will be negative based on the sign that you have on the slope, that is D, which is correct because here they just give you know, the statement and they say, you must say whether the statement is correct or incorrect, if you agree with the statement or you not. Number B and number D are based on, because we are not given the sum summations we are given the sst and the ssr you cannot calculate the coefficient of of the coefficient of correlation you have to calculate the coefficient of determination and the coefficient of determination which is r squared is given by your ssr divided by your sst Using that formula, is B correct? And what is the value of your coefficient of determination? Because that will determine what the answer for C is as well. So you're going to say 27040 divided by 338800 what is the answer 0, 8. it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, how do I calculate my coefficient of correlation, which is R? So it means R is the square root of 0, 0,8. And because it's the square root, I'm going to put the plus or minus because 
I don't know whether it's negative or positive because I don't have the slope on this. So I cannot say for sure it's a negative it's a negative relationship or a positive relationship. So when you take the square root of 0, 0,8, what is the answer? It's 0, 0,89, right? 0, 0,89 measurements. This is correct. You need to know, because the questions in the exam might be different, you need to know if they didn't give you the SSRs and the SSTs, if they give you your X and your Y, remember to use the template, right? Remember to use your template to calculate your regression. And if you need to calculate your SSTs and your SSR, you must also do the same. And there is the formula I just wrote as well in terms of SSR. So you can use the template to find your formulas because you can see there is your SSR divided by SST. And you also have the formulas on, on the site, on the template to help you navigate. And when you use the template, remember, if you are adding, you start from B, you highlight the rows you want. You start from B and you highlight the rows that you want to, to insert or delete. And you only up to that point. You don't delete the entire row and you go up or down. All right. That is that. Uh, and that concludes today's session. Because that was the end of the session and we are five minutes into. Okay. Someone asked me, just give me a second. I didn't uh I didn't write the question, but we're gonna improvise. Someone asked. They are calculating this, the coefficient of variation. Now, remember that coefficient of variation, your coefficient of variation is your sample standard deviation divided by the sample mean multiplied by 100. All right, so if you have data, let's say it's two, three, four, eight, nine and seven. I'm not going to do a lot so that then I have time. So if this is my data, the first thing is to uh, use your calculator to put it onto state mode so that it becomes easy and quick to calculate. So we're going to put to state mode and because we only have one variable, we're using one. All right. And we're going to put in the data. So you're going to say two equal, three equal, four equal, eight equal, nine equal, seven equal. So you have all your data in. You press the AC button and you press the shift and you press that, which is number one, and you go to var, which is four. You press four and you follow what this formula says. Is your standard deviation is S. So we're going to press four again. And you press divide and you go shift. That four and you press two for me. You just follow what the, the calculator is telling you to do. So there it is. And because multiplication and division have the same priority, I can also just say multiply by 100 on the onset. It will apply both mass, move from left to right because they have the same priority. And say equal, and that will give you
your coefficient of variation. Always remember to know, uh, to recognize the formulas that are required. If you are going to use the templates, know how to use the template. If you are going to use your, your calculator, know how to use your calculator correctly as well. For a sharp calculator, for a Casio calculator, or for the online version calculator, or for whatever the calculator you are using, HP, whatever. And make sure that you know the steps of how to use your scientific calculator, especially if you are going to put it to step mode, whether you're going to calculate for one variable or you're going to calculate for two variables. Remember, for two variables, it will be A plus BX. And remembering that B is your slope and A is your intercept based on the formula that you have. Okay, and that concludes my engagement with you. I wish you all the best of luck with your exam. Um, there's not much I can say. I've been saying this since from the start in January when we started with the sessions and there's nothing more I can tell you that will change or create miracles. All you need to Hello, do is Lizzie. go and practice. Yes. I, my sister, my apologies. I'm the one who who asked about this. So it's a problem now. I'm trying to re, uh, to cancel some of the things. I, my storage is full on my video. I can't take video for this. And I'm no. I know I need this information. What? Okay. Uh, it's not to cut off the content. Are there any? Is there any other? question relating to what we just went through anything you want me to explain even more on so that then it becomes part and puzzle of the video otherwise i'm going to stop the recording i want to ask for the link to the templates that you okay. were referring to okay no problem yours is not part of the content so the going once going twice and forever hold your peace. Let me first stop the recording.